So hello there and welcome to another Skills Team podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about how to beat procrastination. It's that time of year again when assignments are due in. It's currently April 2020 and we are in the middle of the coronavirus lockdown. But what that means is there's plenty of opportunity to procrastinate. So with today, Naomi, Diana and myself are going to be talking about how you can beat procrastination, sharing our tips, tricks and advice. So who am I joined by? So first of all, I'm joined by Naomi, the Senior Skills Officer for the Skills Team. Hello. And I'm also joined by Diana, who is our Skills Graduate Placement, uh, and myself, the Skills Co-Creator. So what we are is we are a team of people who have experience procrastinating and we will share our views <laughs> in how we can avoid that. Me specifically, I uh, <laughs> I just no have to say, when, when I write my CV, the first skill at the top, I, I don't put I have experience procrastinating. That's not what I first. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that I definitely procrastinate. Um, but I've learned over the time to control that somewhat. So hopefully we can share our tips and show you some insightful different methods. So I'm going to start with we're going to go around and we're going to each give two tips for or to our two top tips for how we avoid procrastination so dana you first what is your best tip for beating procrastination so i think my first top tip would be to work towards your goal every day so even if that means working for five minutes or working for five hours it's just like i know that there are some days when for example when you need to write an assignment when you don't really want to spend hours to write it down but you can actually spend 10 minutes thinking about like a particular section or maybe your structure, or maybe something. Just make sure you do like something, no matter how little it is every day for your um, for your assignment or your goals or whatever yeah. you're working on, basically. I think that's a good approach. Little and often is good and making sure it's still ticking along. Um, it links to something I'm going to talk later on about, actually, which is all about how you can be productive in procrastination through lots of different um different things at once to procrastinate productively so stay tuned for that um it links a bit to my point which is um my second piece of advice which is all about having clear focused and achievable goals because for me when i'm working if i don't have a goal for that day i will sit there thinking what can i do and when i don't know what i'm doing that's when i find it easy just to be like oh just play xbox or just play my nintendo switch i find it far easier to procrastinate when I don't have a set task or an achievable goal. So try and find something that's achievable. Don't just say, okay, today I'll research. What will you research? How much do you think you want to do? And try and set yourself that goal to try and achieve. So you basically need a direction because you need to measure yeah. somehow your progress. And if you don't have something clear in place, then you don't know too much about yeah. your progress. And I like to break it down as much as I can. So not just having like a strict... Uh, something that is just big and hard to understand but trying to break it down to clear things that I know I can achieve that makes sense mm. so Naomi do you have a piece of advice or do you have anything to add yes I, I agree with all that I um I like the idea of just doing five minutes of something or telling yourself that you're just going to do five minutes of something my current thing um that I well it's not my current thing I've always hated this I really dislike doing the washing up it I really don't <laughs> like doing the washing up um but what I do to get I sort of I almost trick myself into it I make bargains with myself I trick myself into it and I say I'm just gonna do the plates because the plates are big they take up space so I'll, I'll just do the plates and then that's those out the way so I'll get started but all I have to do is the plates and I'll do the plates and then I think, oh, well, there's the glasses. You're supposed to do glasses first before plates anyway. And so then I'll just do those. And then I, mm. by the end of it, I've done all the washing up. But so if was... I'd have said to myself at the beginning, I'm going to do all the washing up, I'd have gone, no, mm. I can't do that internally so like... to myself. So, but, <laughs> so to put that into a form of doing an assignment, like Dana said, telling yourself that you're just agreeing mm. with yourself to only do five minutes is easier than agreeing with yourself to do five hours. And you may find that that five minutes leads on to five so hours. You... You're eventually you're breaking it down to smaller tasks and going, well, whilst I'm being productive and whilst I'm at it, I'm doing a good job, actually. Whilst I'm at it, I might just, you know, I might just do another paper or maybe I'll just write up my analysis for that paper and so on. So keeping that momentum there, but not starting off with something that sounds a bit impossible, like, OK, today I'm going to write my entire assignment. Oh, God, that's a lot. I don't want to do that. Yeah, and you don't feel like yeah. starting to do it, basically. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh my god, that's going to take me 12 hours. I just want to stay and play a little bit more on my yeah. <laughs> When I When I first um, moved in with my husband, um, I 
negotiated with him Thursday no washing up day where just on a Thursday we didn't do washing up it wasn't the best idea in the world because it meant Friday was quite a heavy washing up day but I was firmly committed to Thursday no washing up day can't get away with it now um thinking of study actually I do something similar with study so I do um I have Sundays where I'd say no uh, no study day so I don't do any work towards my assignments on Sundays but then all the days of the week I do so I do yeah. extra so I can have a day off and that's yeah. part of taking breaks in my I did, my view which we did a podcast on last week and yeah we talk about why it's essential to take breaks so go check that out as well. So Alex has spoken about these clear focused goals my my actual piece of advice to add at this point <laughs> is to um to be flexible though if you need to be flexible with things don't set yourself goals at the beginning of the day the goals that you set yourself are there to help you they are not there for you to berate yourself with if you don't meet them so mm. only do these things in such a way that is productive and helpful so if you've set clear goals at the beginning of the day but for whatever reason you haven't achieved them then be be flexible about that be kind to yourself don't give yourself a big long talk about how you've not achieved your goals for the day and how awful that is and um, be flexible if something comes up during the day that priority that changes your priorities for the day then then go with that don't stick rigidly to um things if that no longer makes sense it might be that it does still make sense and you need to make yourself stick with it that's a different scenario um but if what you've decided at the beginning of the day doesn't make sense then um flexibility is key yeah, yeah. And I think the earlier you can start your assignment, the better for that, because then the more time you've got to be flexible. Mm. Whereas if you're doing your work towards the end of an assignment, you have less time to be flexible. and You might end up having to work quite long hours to be flexible, but still don't just know that you can do that and try to plan your time out to manage that. So, Dana, what's your next piece of advice then? So I would say make things more enjoyable and going back to Naomi hating to do the wash washing um so basically i don't like washing dishes either <laughs> to watch <laughs> i mean i'm just doing it because we need to but like mm. to make it more enjoyable for example i just take my phone or maybe my ipad or something and put one of my favorite shows or something on youtube yeah. or something and i'm rather watching something and doing the dishes in the meantime while watching so that makes things more enjoyable yeah, so I, I actually use it as a good break when I do my dishes, at least when I was a student when I did my dishes. Um, and yeah, I used to do podcast time and I listen to some fun podcasts. Yeah, or podcasts maybe, or uh, this is just an example with dishes, but for example, if you really like walking, you can actually have a walk and think about your assignment structure. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. I listen to audiobooks when I'm washing up. If I can get away with it, that's what I do. I listen to audiobooks. I've got my Bluetooth headphones so I can not get, you know, things dropped in the bowl and therefore wet. Um, but it's turning it into study, isn't it? That apply this to study. So yes. if you uh, so if you are studying, how how can you apply that? So you could I don't think we can say that you can do the washing up whilst you're studying to make the studying more no. enjoyable. Washing up does not no. make anything no. more enjoyable. <laughs> Alex, sorry, carry on with your example. So you could, for example, listen to music uh, in the background, potentially, if that helps you. I find it yeah. helps me when writing. When I'm researching, not so much when I'm reading. I don't find that too useful. But when I'm actually writing, I find that to be quite helpful. Uh, I think it makes it more fun. Um, Setting yourself challenges and goals that, and trying to find ways to make it into a game. I think that's good. Have any of you got any ideas of things you could do to make it more fun or make uh, doing your assignments more fun? anything i mean you could you could dress up in fancy dress whatever yeah. works for you you know and actually what you wear can have a really big impact on your mood put a bright sunshiny top on i think rewards that's one thing i said it in the last podcast i'll say it again rewards when you're doing re research could be one way to make it fun so being like okay I, every time i do get to this point or do this thing i will get a reward whether that be harry bow or whether that be okay i get to go for a five minute walk or yeah. whether I get to do X, Y, and Z as a reward. So that's one way I think it helps make it fun. And this, is a, this is actually my next tip. Take time yeah. to look back and recognise what you've done and reward yourself appropriately. So go. make sure you are taking that. And those two things go together very much. You can't do one without the other, really. Take the time to stop and think, actually, yeah, I did that five minutes of work on my assignment. 
I'm really pleased with that. I'm gonna, as Alex says, go for a, go for a walk. I'm I'm quite anti food based rewards, um, <laughs> but other non food based rewards, you know, I'm gonna read a chapter of my book, or or whatever you want to do to reward yourself, or even just I'm gonna say to myself, yeah, that was a really good job, well done, or say to someone else, I did a really good job today. <laughs> that sometimes that's yeah. all it needs. I think it's quite helpful when you're doing this, uh, and here's an example that I learned from one of my lecturers. Uh, they said about how tick lists, if you look at what you have to do, it's quite demoralising, thinking, OK, here's what's left to do. Whereas if you make a list of the things you've done, that can be like, oh, actually, today I've done, I've read five journals, and that's that's good. And you can look back at what you have done rather than, oh, my God, I've still got 25 to read. Um, we have up in, um, we've had several configurations of our house since we moved in, and my husband used to have his study in what is now... Um, my children's bedroom and when it was his study he stuck a to-do list for one summer up on his wall and I can't remember what summer it was what are we now did we say April did we say April 2020 yes we are in April 2020. <laughs> I think it might be a to-do list from maybe the summer of 2018 maybe mm. 2017 I'm not totally sure anyway he moved his study out of that room and um, the girls moved into it and this to-do list is still there up on their wall and I do worry about what kind of mental effect it's going to have on them growing up with this uncompleted to-do list like there are tasks there waiting to be done and like you say Alex it's 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 a bit de demoralizing to look at all these tasks and then I wonder is he ever going to do them yeah who knows and so I'm going to take it down maybe put it back into his new study so he can link it and linking back to Diana's piece of advice from earlier, that actually would be quite demoralising. Um, and if you had smaller achievable goals rather than having a long list of here's everything you need to do this summer, it doesn't look as good as yeah. here's smaller things you can do today. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I think Absolutely. that like... I think that they go really well together because I think it's really useful to have like that big old summer list because you have a like an idea of what you need to do for a longer period of time like you have the big picture but then that needs to be broken down in like smaller lists if that makes sense because yes yeah. I think it can be can be really demoralizing too and one metaphor that can apply to that type of thing again that's I think is quite useful is in the skills team we have a jigsaw and we often do a jigsaw as a team and have team mm. meetings around it it's, a, it's like a thousand pieces long if you look at that and go, oh, my God, I've got to do a thousand pieces, mm. that's a lot. But every day when we're in the office, at least, we would do like three or four each. And over time, that would get done. And if you look back, you go, wow, we've done so much. But because we I, did it yeah. bit by I bit. I miss the jigsaw. It's, it's there. We've got a half completed one in our office at work. It's a Lord of the Rings based one. Half completed. So speaking about that jigsaw, hopefully when it's done, we'll have to post on social media uh, using on our Instagram and Twitter pages the Frodo It's Done gif. And that will be good. And you can do that with your assignments, I guess, as well. Uh, but one tip, which is my final tip for completing your assignments, uh, for beating procrastination in your assignments, sorry, uh, is that you should take away the things that distract you, which I think is the most useful thing for me. So when I was a student, um, and when I am studying, I take away my Xbox and my Nintendo Switch and anything that I can find where I can and remove it. So I put it in a place where it's hard for me to get. So I, if I wanted to play Xbox I, and I needed to, I still could. So I take my Xbox away, put it in a box. And so to pu plug it in, I have to stand on a box, get a box there, stand on a box, reach it and plug it in. And that, for me, somehow stops me from wanting to do it. Because by the time that I've done that effort to get it in, then actually I've stopped procrastinating. Uh, that's not always possible to do. So you can't always take off YouTube off your computer, for example, if that's what procrast you're procrastinating with. Uh, but you can take some steps to help with that. Um, so, for example, you can try blocking it. On my phone, I couldn't actually uninstall YouTube, so I just had to hide the shortcut from it. So to get it, I had to search it, which was far more difficult. I think you know what you're talking. I don't know what you're talking about because I also try to keep my phone away because it's like for me yeah. it's the biggest distraction. Like if I'm writing for an assignment, I'm not. I'm not just gonna stop suddenly and play on my Xbox or something like that. It's it's just not happening. But maybe if somebody calls me, I might stop and talk. Be on the phone like maybe for two or three hours. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just trying to 
like not necessarily not picking up calls, but picking up and saying, "Hey, I'll call you later," um, or just trying to keep the phone mm-hmm. away. But I'm still checking it up from time to time because I can keep it yeah. like a way away. <laughs> There are apps that you can get to manage what you're doing on your phone and what you're not. Um, there's one that I saw recommended through some of the emails at work um, called Forest. Have either of you two seen that? Mm-hmm. Where you say, I'm going, I want to be focused for 20 minutes. And then your phone, then it starts planting a tree. It plants a tree. And if you, you can come out of the app, that's fine. You can, you can look at something on your phone, but your tree doesn't grow. And there's like a half grown tree in your forest that's like, well, there you go. You didn't grow your tree. But if you leave it 20 minutes, then your tree grows. Mm -hmm. And if you did it for 40, so you can set a time. So I want to not use my phone for X amount of time. And then, like I said, it grows little trees. So it's gamification. So if you study for that long, you get your reward of a tree. Yes. But my approach is similar to that. But instead of having an app, I just do this with my phone. And turn it off and then throw it on my bed. Don't actually throw your phones at your bed, but that's what I do. Because that keeps me away from it. Because otherwise I get distracted by messages. So I mute it, throw it away, tell people if I need to talk to people, you can contact me at this hour. If you really need me, call my house phone, so on. Um, yeah. Because then that way I can just focus without getting distracted. Um, but again, there's these flexibility elements as well. So I tried this. I downloaded Forest. And I started growing my trees um, just at the point that my stepmom got poorly and went into hospital. And then yeah. I wanted to be checking my phone constantly to see if there are any updates. So it, you've got to be flexible. It, yeah. Life does come flexible. in and get in the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, don't be, be, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. If for some reason your, your little tree doesn't grow, you know, be kind to yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's I think that's the end of our top tips, two top tips each. We've gone through and done a full round. Uh, but I think now what we're going to go on to is we're going to go on to some quick fire questions, the second part of this podcast. So I'm going to ask uh, each person a question and we're going to try and answer it in one line. So the first question I'm going to ask is I'm going to say to Naomi, how do you stay motivated? See, because it's quick fire, I hadn't thought about this um, too much beforehand because that undermines the point of quick fire. Um, and I'm guessing the answer that you want isn't something like a deep and crushing sense of never no. being able to do enough in the world. Um, <laughs> the constant fear of failure. Um, no, <laughs> that is one of the ways I stay motivated. And actually, a legitimate point is thinking about the consequences if you do not do the work. That is a way that I stay motivated. If I don't do this right now, then these are the consequences. I've um, This morning I was working on something for you, Alex, wasn't I? And yeah. if I hadn't have done that, that had a deadline. If I hadn't have done that, I would have been letting you down. So that consequence of not doing it kept me motivated. So you go for the negative approach then? Of... Sometimes. Often. Yeah. I go Sometimes the... that works for me too. Thinking about consequences, yeah? Yeah. I try and I try and do I think I do a lot more to help other people than myself and that's probably part of it is I don't want to let them down but when it's my own assignment work for me that doesn't work so I've got to find different ways of motivating myself for that and part of that for me at least is I try and make it fun so that's the way I try and motivate myself is I try to do what uh, we said earlier about gamifying it and trying to set myself challenges give myself awards and thinking about the benefits that I will get in the short term, long term benefits don't work for me. The short term benefits that I'm going to get for doing this. So I get a break that I cannot, I get a guilt free break if I do this. I get some Haribo, I get some chocolate, and a guilt free break. Nah, I like that. <laughs> uh, so, Dan, how do you keep yourself motivated? <clears throat> well, I think, I think one way is exactly what Naomi said before but um hmm I think I'm one of the things that I do is when I don't want to do something I try to think to the bigger picture Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to remember why I'm doing it because sometimes you forget about it and um well, even if it's even if it's like for like washing the dishes, you do it for your own well being, like for being in yeah. a clean environment, for stuff like that, really. Yeah. Um but when it's for an assignment I just always remember the bigger picture. Well, I just 
had the goal of graduating with the first class, yeah. for example. So I was like, well, I just need to do this work because at the end it's going to pay off. So yeah. interestingly, with three of us, and we've got three different approaches. So Naomi's got the approach of what if I don't do this? What's the negative consequences? I've got the short term consequences. So what can, what can I gain in the short term? like a break and then dan has got the bigger picture long-term goals so Naomi, did you have something you wanted to add i was just thinking i um was filling out some forms for my daughter the other day and one of them asked what's her favorite thing to do at preschool so i said to her um what what is your favorite what's your favorite thing to do at preschool what's your best bit of the day and she said tidying up and i was I was confused by this because as we've established over the long course of time, this is not something that comes naturally to me. It's not something I, I enjoy. So I talked to her a bit more and I established that um, they have to tidy up before they have snack time. And ah. <laughs> actually what her favourite part of the day is, is the snack time. She likes the tidying up because it means she gets a snack afterwards. <laughs> so yeah. there we go. <laughs> That's so cute. Some people might be like, I like work because because I go to work, I can then pay for things like a house or yeah. an Xbox and so on. And so it, it's something that fuels what you want to do. Um, so, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good motivation. And children are often really good for that. So speaking yeah. about other people's advice, we also ask some students what their advice and how they can keep themselves motivated. Um, so I'm just going to go through a couple of top tips for that students are given for how they keep themselves motivated. Um, so the first student said, like what I said, actually, regular breaks and treats. And have study studying equals one episode of something. Act. Um, yeah, I agree. Take regular breaks. I probably wouldn't say an, app, uh, an episode because for me, episodes are like an hour long. So one hour studying, one hour break. That's quite a lot. But it's about how you keep yourself motivated. And often with episodes of things, I would be tempted to watch a second one. Turn off autoplay. Turn off autoplay. <laughs> yeah. Especially Don't if let it do it. it. So beating procrastination for me, that doesn't work. But for them, it does work. If the episode is something 10 minutes long, maybe it's better. But for me, again, YouTube, as I said in the last podcast, it just keeps playing and you just keep tempted and you go down a rabbit hole. Uh, but yeah, I agree with the regular breaks part. Um, the second student said, uh, look at where you are now and where you want to be a year after you finish your degree. That's how they stay motivated. So a bit similar to what Dan was saying about the bigger picture yeah. and how looking at what you can achieve. The third student said, plan ahead and always remember that hard work pays off believe in yourself um so again it's looking at the fact that it pays off and so there's some form of payoff there um the four students said uh, they set themselves smaller achievable goals um so that's similar to how we said earlier about how i try and plan focus goals that i can actually achieve if there's two goals that are too big or too broad they are intimidating and sometimes you just they make it easy for me to procrastinate um the next student said something very similar, saying, keep your goal in sight and manifest it uh, manifest it every day. I love that. The ambition in that, manifest your goal every day. That's yeah. great. I like that. Me too. These students' advice, they're always good advice. We always mm. get good advice from students. Yeah. And we have three pieces of advice uh, left to go through. So another student said, remember to have some fun too. Make sure you're not all work and no play. And yeah, I agree. Have fun. Don't just solidly study. Take breaks. Some breaks longer, some breaks shorter. We go into more depth about that in the last podcast, so check that one out. Um, and then the next student said something again quite similar, saying always include an activity that you like during the day. For example, going to the gym or going for a walk. And um, I had to find that quite useful, so I've started doing some exercise whilst at work. Uh, not at work, like during my lunch and during the breaks that I have. And actually that is helps me focus um so i think that's quite important um and finally the last piece of advice that we got is getting a good night's sleep and self-care you work better when you take care of yourself and that's think, a really good piece of advice yeah sleeping think, is important guys <laughs> yeah i i totally agree with that sleeping is really important uh but sometimes when you are working under pressure in your assignments you may be tempted not to sleep uh, and you may not feel that you have the time to sleep, but do make sure you take breaks. Um, but speaking of that type of thing... I doesn't... have never once been tempted not to sleep because of an assignment. Never sleep. Me neither. Like, there. Maybe, maybe there's snacks as well. Mm. Food, priorities, but no. 
I but can't, I I can't say, wrap my round around my head around not sleeping to do an assignment. I, I know hope, people do it though. I, I would say that like, autoplay made me multiple times maybe stay until three, four a.m. to watch something, because it's just like there are some things that wait, you just can't stop. You want to see the next episode, next episode, next episode. Yeah. Yeah, if it's if it's over the weekend, then that's fine. But then if you have to do work tomorrow, please try to sleep and don't stay too late. Yeah, I, f- I think I've found it a few times when I've actually had two or th- two or three occasions where I've stayed up till three a.m. doing my assignment work, but I've always slept until at least seven, so I've always had some sleep. But eight hours sleep is a good a good amount to recommend if you can achieve that sometimes it's more difficult for other, some people than others i can look at it when i say that but um yes. having sleep is definitely worthwhile um so speaking about how sometimes you might not be able to do it when you're under pressure how do you th- who do you think that you guys work better under pressure or do you work better when you are longer in advance of a deadline with lots of time to plan so diana how do you think about that I think for me it's a combination between both. Mm. To be honest, I don't think it's only one of them. It's usually when I have deadlines close by, I become more productive. I don't know, it's just something Yeah. that makes me... Because I really want to finish it in time. But I'm still yeah. working even if when the deadline is not close. But I think my, my rhythm is a little yeah. different. There's not the same sense of urgency, is what I think. Yeah. 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 What do you think, Naomi? hundred percent i work better if i've got time i do not work well under pressure to a deadline at all really don't um i i absolutely work best if i've got time i think if i worked properly when i have time i would be great i think i work best and do the most when i'm under pressure but is that my best work so for me because of that sense of urgency that we discussed earlier, that's when I do more work and that's when I'm able to do things. But that leads to burnout, it leads to stress. And overall, I don't think it will be my best work, but I do think I will do more work closer to the, closer to the deadline than I would otherwise because I often prioritise other things further away from the deadline and will push volunteering more to walk at that point. Whereas when I'm closer to with that sense of urgency, I'll arrange, I'll arrange it so I don't have as much volunteering to do. And so I can prioritise my deadlines. And sometimes I leave it a bit too late, which is why I've said about the 3 a.m.s. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the way that I do it. But um, speaking about um, the fact that I do volunteering and things as well, um, something that I do a lot is something called productive procrastination. So have either of you heard of this before? I have, but only because you talked about it in the last podcast. I did talk about it in the last podcast because you raised something very similar, Naomi. So reductive procrastination is a term that um, my partner uses a lot. And effectively, it's where if you're sick of doing one particular task or piece of work, rather than forcing yourself through that task and say, okay, I'm at the reading stage or the research stage of my work. I'm going to sit here until I do all the research and then it's done. She instead changes up the task that she's doing. So if she's got another assignment, she might work on that one instead, because then that's fresh. And she's not stuck at this hot at this this point. Or she might do other things, like she might go and uh, do some volunteering or do other things that are needed. Um, so if you do housework that is needed, not just because you are actively procrastinating. So let's say you, you go and build a shed, could that have waited? Doing the dishes, that's productive procrastination because that gives you a break and also you're feeling happy about that. You're not feeling actually I've wasted my time here watching YouTube. So you're still doing something different and getting away from it, but you're actually doing so productively. So what do you think about that as an approach? I love the insight into your mind, Alex. Am I going to do the washing up or am I going to build a shed? What are you going to put in (laughs) your shed? I don't know, but it's like that is. That's why it's not productive procrastination. You've got no use for the shed. Yeah, or maybe I'll paint my room. You know, did that need doing? Probably not. It's good to have done, but I could have done that after. But this is things that are needed earlier. So, for example, my washing up, if I don't do that, then it will build up and give me a bigger task when I'm closer to my deadline. So I'm actually still helping myself out by doing it. Yeah. But mainly, yes, it's about switching between assignments. So if you've got other pieces of work you can be doing, switching between them 
And that's how I think I'm able to do quite a lot of different work is because I constantly switch between tasks. And you can build in other things as well. So sw- you can switch between screen based tasks and non screen based tasks in yeah. that and build together all yeah. those different things in at once. And it's not even saying it's different assignments necessarily, but different tasks. So you could say, OK, I'm doing research now. I'm doing some writing now. I'm going to do different bits and pieces, but on the same assignment. Um, so I think that's a really useful approach to procrastinate whilst also being productive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that is something which I think is really important. So that about wraps up all the advice that we have for this podcast. However, uh, just to summarise what we've discussed so far is that being procrastination, there are lots of different ways of doing it. So try to find a way that works for you. Uh, try to find ways that keep you motivated. Um, common themes throughout are all about taking breaks, uh, doing things that are productive, breaking it down from a big long list into something that's more achievable and doable, uh, but also looking at the picture that you think will help you to keep you motivated. So either looking at what will happen if it doesn't help you, if, sorry, what will happen if you don't do your work, what will happen if you do it in the long term, what will happen in the short term, and finding ways that work for you to beat it. So in addition to this podcast, there are some further resources that can help you out with uh, beating procrastination. Uh, we have a work-life balance skills guide that will be linked in the description of this video. Uh, we have a video about studying at home and some advice that we have for that. We have last week's podcast about taking breaks for studying work. And finally, we have lots of enhanced your learning workshops uh, that are available, which you can help plan your week with us and ask us questions. So check out the calendar for what uh, what is available now. Those change our times. So if you're watching this in the future, then make sure that they are still available and also make sure that you actually aren't procrastinating with them but I do think they can be productive procrastination and can help give you an insight into further things um however if you are procrastinated by watching this video hopefully this has been productive procrastination for you uh if further videos on our channel might help you uh that you could then you could watch them in your breaks for productive procrastination if you feel that they are helping you and they might not be needed now watch them after your assignment um however that is all the advice that we have in this podcast. That's all the further tips and pieces that we have. Thank you very much to all the student voices that we had in this podcast. Um, they were really useful. I thought they were good advice for motivation. So thank you to Dan and Naomi for assembling those. And also thank you both for coming to this podcast and giving you advice. Anytime. Yep. Um, thank you very much to you as well for watching. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.